and welcome back to day 12 of my no sugar challenge. So I got on the scale this morning and I saw on 191.1 and my first thought is how the F did I gain like four pounds by eating 357 calories a day before? And then I like stepped on my scale again and then it showed the actual correct weight because the tiles in my house are always uneven and if I put the scale in the wrong spot, it'll add like almost five pounds. So I'm happy to report that I was actually down to 186.1, which put me down 1.4 pounds from the day before. It also put me down about 9.6 or 9.7 pounds from a week ago. So I don't feel a massive difference. Like it doesn't feel like I really lost 10 pounds since then. It definitely feels like less. I wouldn't say that after fasting and eating the potato that I had zero bloat. I still kind of felt like my stomach was a bit on the bloated side and maybe that was from the enema um, and like all the salt. I'm not really sure. That's just a random guess. But I just got here to the gym so I'm going to go ahead and get a workout in. But my sleep was terrible yesterday. I didn't fall asleep till like 1.30 a.m. I woke up at 7.15. And for some people they're like, wow, like I would dream to sleep that much. But for me, I need a lot more sleep than that to have a productive day in a sense. But I feel like I can still have a productive day. I think a few reasons. So like when I start fasting and probably fewer calories also means that I need less sleep. One and two, I did that coffee enema later in the day. I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Therefore, that probably was like more caffeine in my system from what I had earlier in the day. I had a cup of coffee this morning. I also took my kidney supplement. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to, what's crazy is like, again, I woke up today and I actually felt awake. Imagine that. So I did feel pretty good this morning waking up. I did kind of feel some like soreness in my feet. So that was something that I kind of want to like see how that progresses over time. I want to also mention that since I've been consistently going to the gym, I have stayed clear of the cardio machines because this whole thing is, my, my new theme is do something different. And what have I done in the past? I always resort to the cardio machines because it's easy. I can watch YouTube while I'm on there. I don't have to get creative with like what kind of weightlifting routine I'm going to do. And so I'm like not allowing myself, like the only um, machine I'll let myself get on in the cardio area um, is going to the rower. And I haven't even used that yet because of my hip. I know it wouldn't feel so, super good, but my hip is feeling significantly, significantly better since I tried that original run. So I don't plan on running anytime soon, but my hip, it's like unbelievable how much better it's feeling. And it was like starting to feel better like it was on the the uptrend and then as soon as I started like doing more fasting I feel like it just it got a lot a lot better a lot quicker so I'm gonna go ahead and head into the gym and I will catch you later all right so I got back from the gym just a bit ago I'm kind of feeling a little bit on the more sleepy side I did have a lot of pep in my step when I left the house my workout was 50 minutes of weights I feel like that's the perfect time where I feel like I have just really pushed myself and I'm just ready to get out of there. So 50 minutes um, just seems like it's been the, uh, the regular time that I usually spend in the gym. I went to the store, the store that I believed I got the better tasting sweet potato at. Bought a sweet potato there and um, some lemon as well because I ran out of lemon. It's approaching 11.30. And what that means is that I'm going to be 18 hours fasted. I can't really say that I'm hungry. Do I kind of feel an emptiness in my stomach? Maybe. I actually did kind of feel hunger around like 1.30 a.m. Like right before I fell asleep yesterday. I was like, oh gosh, I'm a little bit hungry. But like makes no sense for me to go get up and eat to just go to sleep, right? If I was truly hungry, I'd be hungry in the morning. Not hungry in the morning yet. So waiting, uh, not waiting around, but we'll see how I um, start to feel as time passes. I'm planning on doing sweet potatoes again today. I hate the idea that I have food that is potentially gonna go bad in my fridge. Um, I need to find like, well, I just gotta like make plates of food um, and go hand it out to like someone on the street. So what I thought was really interesting is I was listening to a podcast this morning, the Brain Health Podcast. I'll go ahead and put it up here so that you could check it out. This is one of my recent 
favorite podcast. I really, really enjoy it. And the one I'm listening to today, the guy talked about how um, protein is one of the most satiating foods. And I was just thinking like, wow, I did that experiment yesterday. Like, I know that if I would have had 350 calories of just like straight red meat yesterday, I would have never felt as satiated as I did. And I would have had to continue eating compared to eating the amount of sweet potatoes that I did yesterday. And if we're talking about calorie content, if we're talking about ounces, it would have been a little bit different. So maybe what I'll do is, like when I'm done with the potato thing, I'll maybe keep track of the ounces I'm having per day. And then maybe for a week after that, I'll switch to like just red meat and that same amount of ounces and see what happens. But we always hear, right? Like once you have like carbs, you're just gonna crave more, more carbs. See, that's not really the case. I didn't experience that yesterday. And so, you know, obviously it's just one day, but ultimately like that myth was kind of debunked for me personally in that moment. So obviously I think when you have sugar, like sweet stuff, it makes you crave more, but I think carbs become different when you're um, not eating a big variety of food. And you know, what I'm also kind of considering is that there is a possibility that this all comes down to basically uh, food variation. You're, you know, have a better chance of losing weight if you have um, less variation in your diet. So I'd be like, you know, this might evolve into something of like, hey, I eat just potatoes for a week and then hey, I eat just meat for a week and like I try different things and it'd be crazy if I just continue to lose over time. You know, we'll see, that's obviously really far ahead and I'm just, you know, sticking to the potatoes. I feel like I have enough potatoes. I don't even have that many potatoes, but with how full they make me, I feel like I have enough potatoes for at least four more days. I feel like I've gotten over the hardest part when it comes to completing the potato challenge, so I just gotta, I gotta stick with it. All right, so it has been about two hours since I finished eating the potatoes. I had 18 ounces of potatoes. How does that compare to yesterday? Yesterday I had 14. So one of the mistakes I made is, I talked about how I'm trying to be more present and mindful when I eat. I made the big, big, big mistake of speaking on the phone while I was eating. That will be the last time I do that. Hopefully the last time I do that. At 18 ounces of sweet potatoes, that comes out to approximately 450 calories. I'm eating the orange potatoes, right? And there's always been this massive debate on, is it a yam or is it a sweet potato? Which is which? I want you to see where, <laughs> why I was even more confused today. I thought for sure that the orange one was a yam. And the other one, the lighter yellow one, is a sweet potato. I went and Googled sweet potato versus yam. Versus yam. Looked under images, and it is the most conflicting scene I've ever seen. I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. So now I'm a little bit more confused, and that changes how I put it into my chronometer because there is a difference in calories. Another thing that I learned today, so sweet potatoes used to be one of my favorite foods, and I stopped eating them for multiple reasons. I didn't really cook at home for a long period of time. I mainly had them a lot when I lived in my parents' house. And then also, um, like I went to like the lower carb phase and everything. So what I've learned is that the glycemic index number of, uh, of a sweet potato depends on how it's cooked. The highest glycemic index is when it's baked, which is what I've been doing. The middle is if it's steamed and the lowest glycemic index is if it's actually in the microwave. I'm really lucky because my microwave's broken. I mean, I haven't tried to fix it. It's probably pretty easy of a fix. I haven't even like paid attention to the microwave, mainly because of the fact that um, I try not to use the microwave. I haven't really used it in months. So I'm curious how, what, like where a air fryer would lie and how that would affect it. So that's something to sort of consider moving forward. One thing I noticed is I didn't get as full today as I did yesterday. So I'm coming off of a 19 hour fast. Yesterday I came off of a 50 hour fast, which I feel like my stomach shrinks over time. So then like I get full quicker after a longer fast. But after 19 hours, I ate 18 ounces of sweet potato and I was definitely full. But now I'm sitting here like, oh, I could probably go for some more where yesterday, two hours after, that was not the scenario. So I'm feeling content at the moment. And like, I didn't really reach that level of like insane fullness like I did yesterday. And I think if I would have reached that today, I would have been good for like a while longer, but we'll see how today plays out and like how my weight fluctuates, not my weight, how my hunger fluctuates. For the first time in a while, I actually had a meat craving today. 
I was scrolling through YouTube and someone had posted a photo, one of my carnivore people that I follow, of like a big bowl of beef with like butter on top. I was like, oh, that looks good. So I had a bit of a meat craving for a moment. The only intense craving I've gotten so far through like just these last two days of potato, it's been such a short period of time so far. I do feel like I was actually thinking, I was like, maybe I should just go back to the gym for another workout, but I really do think that my body needs to recover. I'm feeling insanely sore from like head to toe with uh, all the workouts that I've had in the last week. So I think I just need to chill out a little bit there, but I will do a little bit cardio here at home and then jump in my sauna. Um, sometime this afternoon, but yeah, that's about it so far and what I've kind of learned and put together moving forward I might eat this evening. I'm not sure I would like to keep it in a tight window as much as possible But I'm curious to see like how I'm gonna be feeling tomorrow after I got home from the gym and even before I started um, Eating I really was feeling more on the tired side and I think that's because of my sleep yesterday I was actually really close to taking a nap, but then I kind of snapped out of it and I'm like oh if I take a nap then it's gonna take me longer to fall asleep probably tonight. So I don't have a ton of energy today, to be completely honest with you. So it is currently 5 p.m. I had my potatoes earlier. It was just afternoon. So it's been about three and a half hours since I completed that meal. I kind of got hungry there for a second. So I was like, well, I should probably just put some sweet potatoes in the oven just in case, like to have them ready. Cause I would like to keep my eating window as tight as possible. So I'm like, you know what, if I'm gonna cook one sweet potato, I might as well go get some other ones because they take so long to cook. And like I mentioned about the microwave thing, I don't really feel like trying to fix my microwave today. Just not gonna happen. I get up, I walk outside. And I didn't have a headache when I was at home, but as soon as I started walking outside, I just got this massive, massive headache. headache and my ears just became so, so sensitive to anything. And then like here in Puerto Rico, people like put these massive speakers on the beds of trucks and they like drive around and they're playing like not even music it's usually like advertisements it's the most fucking annoying thing i've ever experienced in my life and i just feel a little bit on the agitated side i'm just like i just get so disgusted with the streets like can people just pick up their dog shit for fuck's sake like take care of where you live i just don't fucking understand sometimes I'm like, why do I feel this headache? I'm not sure what it's coming from. I've had on and off headaches for gosh, it feels like the last month now. I'm not really sure. I'm like, well, maybe it's because I'm dehydrated. I really haven't had any salts. And I'm like, the lemon, I'm like, perfect. I made the drink with the electrolytes, with the lemon. I'm not as hungry as I was. So I don't know if I'll end up eating any of the potatoes, but I will let you know when the time comes. Welcome back to the sauna chron chronicles. <laughs> okay, so it's approaching 8 p.m. Let me just give you the rundown of what's happened in the last few hours. I felt better, my headache went away. I felt a lot better actually after I consumed the electrolytes in terms of like my headache. At 5 p.m. started the USA women's game versus, versus Spain. And I love women's soccer. So I was able to stream that live and I was like, okay, perfect. This is like a great way to end my Sunday by watching the game. So I'm like laying there watching the game and there's about like 25 minutes left and I'm like fighting it. Like my eyes keep closing. Like I am so, so, so tired. That doesn't happen very often for me. It was a zero, zero game. I mean, it wasn't boring, but I you know, obviously there was no scoring happening yet. I literally fall asleep probably like 20 minutes before the game ends. I wake up and the next game starting, it's a men's game. And I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So I go and Google and the USA wins 1-0, yay, hooray, but I still gotta go see who, who scored that goal and how they scored that goal. I completely missed that. So then I was thinking, I'm like laying there and I'm like, I was really trying not to fall asleep because I'm like, dang, I could probably fall asleep by like 9 p.m. today if I stay awake. That's why I skipped the nap in the afternoon. So then I had some more, I had a little bit of energy after the nap. So I went ahead and did some cardio. I'm in the sauna now. I'm gonna shower, then head to bed. Um, I'm just hoping that I get tired, but I'm kind of awake at the moment. So that's what happens when I work out again and get in the sauna. It's like, ah, awake all over again. Overall feeling quite good. I think my energy level is mainly off because of the coffee. Oh, I'm so like torn between, like I wanna have, I, I just don't know how, how I'm gonna feel in the morning, but every morning I've been like, really craving that cup of joe. Another thing, when I woke up from my nap, like I just, always happens to me, like I could literally go into a nap and feel sick to my stomach full and I could wake up 20 minutes later and all of a sudden I'm like starving. So I wake up and it's like this weird taste I get in my mouth where it makes me wanna eat. So I'm like, 
maybe I want more potatoes. But then I drank some water and I'm like, it's not true hunger. It's not true hunger. So end of the day at about 450 something calories. What's been really interesting through this is that sure it's only day two of the potato situation, but the carbs are high. Like today was like 450 carbs. I'm not swollen. I'm not feeling swollen at all. Um, my feet were kind of sore this morning, but I'm curious to see how I'm going to feel tomorrow. But the sore, I mean, no swelling, no swelling in my ankles, no swelling in my hands. That's a very, very common thing. The true test is going to be once I'm like four to five days in and I really have a lot of carbs to see how my body starts responding then. But that's all I have for you today on day 12 of the no sugar challenge. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for day 13. And as always go out there and create a life that you love.